sounds like the Federal Reserve can't win here. If they print money, now they're causing inflation. If they don't, people fail. So what are they supposed to do? Is that's the economy that we live in. You have to make that decision for yourself. What type of market do you want to live in? What type of economy do you want to live in? Do you want to live in an economy that's reliant on the government? Or do you want to live in a free market where things will correct? Which and are we right now? We're somewhere in the middle. <laughs> we're supposed to be a free market, but we're getting pushed more and more to the other side. I mean, you got to just decide what it is that you want. And unfortunately, the Federal Reserve Bank has a lot of power and a lot of influence. And as they continue to do this money printing, the average person is paying the price. And that is what inflation is. And that is the inflation that is going to stay. These supply chain issues will fix themselves. They will go away. But the inflation cannot just go away. Our dollar is being diluted. This is why people are moving their money to things like cryptocurrency, to gold, because they're, they're worried about the devaluation of our dollar. What does cryptocurrency do? Cryptocurrency, let's focus on Bitcoin because cryptocurrency is a whole asset class. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is supposed to be now another store of value. Bitcoin is, there's 21 million Bitcoins that can be mined. In order to mine a Bitcoin, it does take effort. It takes computing power. A computer has to now work, solve a problem to mine a little bit of Bitcoin. So it takes effort to mine that Bitcoin. And then there's a limited supply of Bitcoin. So it's a deflationary asset because now there's a limited supply. If you and I go and buy Bitcoin, now there's even a smaller supply. And if more and more people buy Bitcoin, then that would make its valuability, make it more valuable because more and more people are buying it. And if it has use, if you and I can exchange Bitcoin, if you want to buy my mug and you pay me in Bitcoin, now it has use. Now it's real money. It has its store of value and it's used as a means of exchange. You can compare that to something like gold. I own cryptocurrency and I also own gold. Mm -hmm. Gold is another store of value. It takes time, effort, and labor to mine an ounce of gold. That's why it's real money, right? But the issue with gold is if you wanted to take your gold and go buy something in Japan or India or anywhere else in the world with it, it's not that easy. You got to take this gold with you, put it in your pocket, put it in your suitcase, and then transport it to the other end of the world. That's not very easy to do. Or even if you wanted to buy something here with it, if you wanted to go buy a pair of shoes with your gold, you got to take your bar of gold and cut it into pieces. It's a lot of work and it's not that easy to do. And so that's the difference between gold and Bitcoin versus Bitcoin. This is something new and a lot of people don't understand it. And so people are naturally scared by it and they don't believe it because why in the world would people start trading this random thing on the internet, this random coin on the internet when I can use dollars, which is mm -hmm. backed by the government. And so, you know, you're going to face the hurdle of people questioning it and people not understanding it. But eventually, more and more people will start to learn about it. More and more people will start to, learn, you know, be okay with it. And then they'll start to use it or buy it. And that's what the whole movement of cryptocurrency is. It's a movement of people moving to their own currency, not controlled by a central authority. Because your gold people don't, it's not tracked like our dollars are, right? Your gold, you can keep it in your own basement and nobody knows where it is. <laughs> Versus our dollars are different because it's controlled by a central authority. Our dollars are controlled by the Federal Reserve Bank and the government, which means that your dollars can be easily manipulated. The value of our dollars can be manipulated because if the Fed prints more dollars and people lose value, they lose faith in our dollars, then the value of your dollars go down. Mm -hmm. So you might work hard to earn $10,000. You produce $10,000 worth of value. You take that $10,000, you put it in your bank. The money doesn't do anything because your bank isn't paying you anything. In 10 years, that $10,000 is still going to be $10,000. But that $10,000 will not be able to buy you what $10,000 can today. It's not because the value that you produced isn't valuable anymore. You still produce that value, but it's the way you stored that value. Those dollars, that currency that you stored it in, did not maintain its value. So that's how people moved to gold historically. But now people are moving to things like cryptocurrency. You also saw people would move it to land. But again, land has the same issue where you cannot transport land. And it's not easy to conduct exchanges. It's not easy for me to buy things with land, right? You can't do that. Mm -hmm. But with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you can. And that's what cryptocurrency is. It's the people movement for money. And it is not centralized, meaning it's not controlled by the Federal Reserve Bank. 
It's not controlled by the United States government. It's controlled by the people. You have millions. You have tons of nodes around the world. Nodes are computers which monitor and control Bitcoin. So it's not controlled by one agency. So we have inflation. You know, it's at record highs. And the Federal Reserve, they're not going to fix it. You said supply chain issues will eventually fix themselves. But yet people right now are still struggling to buy things because the price is going up. So what are some things that people can actually do right now and in the future to kind of get around this inflation problem? You have to understand what it is, and then you have to move your dollars into something that will preserve its value mm -hmm. or buy assets. Now, this is a tricky thing for me to say because, you know, people would say, oh, go out and, and buy stocks, go buy real estate. It's tough because we're also at record highs and everything across the board mm -hmm. so you know people don't want to you, you, it's like a double-edged sword either you go buy assets at this record high and potentially they go down and now you lose money or you sit there and s wait in cash and watch your dollars get eaten away by inflation there's no right answer you have to understand what's going on and then make some decisions like i you know i i have some cash i don't have as much cash as i used to because i used moved a lot of my dollars into uh, stable coins cryptocurrency which i earn interest so i've moved a lot of cash into that I, I have my passive investments i have money going into things like stocks and cryptocurrency consistently dollar cost average every week i have money going into my stock market etfs every day i have money going into cryptocurrencies dollar cost averaging them and every month i have money going into buy gold physical gold then I have cash sitting there waiting to invest into things like real estate, into stocks. If I see some, they go undervalued. You can look at emerging market companies. I invest in startups. So, I mean, you just have to understand where the opportunities are. Don't chase. Mm -hmm. Don't chase. Understand and then look for value, look for opportunity. And when you see that, then you have to go and capitalize on it. Inflation is not why you need to go and just run and dump all of your money into gold or cryptocurrency. You don't want to be chasing but you need to be smart and you need to understand what's going on and, and if you want to be an investor understand that investing is not for six months because the next six months the next 12 months we're going to see volatility we're going to see volatility as the supply chain issues slow down we're going to see volatility issues as we see the economy start to kind of rely on itself without the help of the federal reserve bank we're going to see volatility as one day the federal reserve bank starts to raise interest rates as money becomes more expensive that will slow down inflation, and that will cause more volatility. But you have to understand what it is that you're investing for, and that that's that's the tricky thing. You know, it's, there's no right answer, but you have to be educated. Is there any way to avoid inflation altogether? Get rid of the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank can print money. When you debase your currency, you are going to create more inflation. What do you mean by get rid of the Federal Reserve Bank? Get rid of the Federal Reserve Bank. They're not a, a federal entity. They're called the Federal Reserve Bank, but they're not actually federal. It even says so on their website. Is that going to happen? Probably not. I mean, in this day and age, it's going to be nearly impossible to do that. But, I mean, how do you get rid of inflation? You don't debase your currency. You have your currency based off of something tangible, and you have a limited supply of it. If you cannot increase the supply, and you have a limited supply and you have demand for it, then that will not be able to cause inflation. If you have a limited supply of anything and the demand is going up, that will cause deflation. It makes the value of a currency more expensive. But we cannot see something like that happen in the United States because the government needs inflation. We have 29, almost $29 trillion worth of national debt. The only way that we can pay this money back is by inflating it away because we can't afford $29 trillion worth of national debt. So the only way that we can pay that is if we devalue our dollars, if we make $29 trillion not as expensive. How do you do that? You make each one of those dollars less valuable. That way now we can pay back this $29 trillion with less valuable dollars. Mm -hmm. If we saw this type of deflation, hey, that would be good for people that are savers. That would be good for people that are earning an income because now guess what? Your paycheck can buy you more. Mm. Your savings can buy you more. But who is that not good for? It's not good for the government 
because they're not going to be able to pay back their national debt because now the national debt has become so much more expensive because they have to pay back this $29 trillion with more expensive dollars. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where <laughs> that question doesn't solve anything. You have to understand the situation that you're in and you have to know how to win in the game that you're in. You can't just keep complaining at the pro about the problem. You have to educate yourself and do something about it because the reality is that's the world that we're in.